Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto married with female Niji, movie, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Dragon LS, link is in the description, also subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. It was an hour ago. Naruto had fallen asleep in his house, and gotten up from his sleep late in the morning, since he stood up practicing some in one of the training fields. He was rudely awoken by a knock on his door. Naruto slowly opened his eyes to the sudden sound. He looked up sleepily while rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. He got up, still in a groggy mood, and opened the entrance to his apartment. As he opened the door, he saw a tall man in a grey vest and other ninja attire, he also wore a type of animal mask. Naruto widened his eyes at the sudden intruder, immediately recognizing who it was. Anbu? Naruto blurted out. Did I do something wrong? The Anbu member shook his head. He raised a thumb to the direction of his back. Okage-sama wants you in her office in a few minutes. She has a mission for you. That is all. The Anbu member then suddenly hops off the balcony of Naruto's apartment. Naruto looked outside, but he could no longer see the Anbu member. Naruto looked out into the morning sky and saw that it was still pretty bright outside, it woke him up a bit. After straightening his mind out at the sudden turn of events, he heads back inside to get ready to head to Tsunade's office. Naruto hopped out of his apartment to head to the Hokage's office. He appeared at the front doors of the Hokage building. He entered through and started to traverse the hallways and the stairs of the huge building. After getting around a few twists and corners and almost running into Tsunade's assistant, Shizun, he appeared in front of the Hokage office. Naruto knocked on the door to Tsunade's office. It was loud enough to wake the dead. Naruto heard a voice behind the door. Enter. Naruto heard the word and opened the door. What Naruto saw wasn't surprising, but it was fairly common. He saw Tsunade slouching on her desk with her hand supporting her head. It was plain obvious that she was being lazy again, what with all of the paperwork she had to go through every day. Tsunade looked at Naruto, wondering what he was looking at. Boy, what are you looking at Tsunade said, angry. Naruto shook his head. It's nothing, Tsunade botch and Naruto said, as he scratched his head with a grin on his face. But he gave a more serious look after that. So, what do you need me for? Tsunade straightened up a little bit. Well, for right now, I'm waiting for Team Guy to show up, since you're going along with them on this mission. You'll be heading to the country of the wave. Tsunade explained, but was immediately cut off by Naruto screaming. The country of the wave are you serious Naruto yelled, not believing his ears, but he didn't notice that Tsunade's ears hurt him quite clearly and painfully. She cupped her ears with her hands to tone down the harshness. Tsunade slammed her desk once the voice settled down in response. Amagaki. Don't yell like that. She held her forehead with her left hand as her face winced in pain. I have a headache, alright. So calm down Naruto didn't care though, he kept babbling like a little child who just obtained candy. The but. The country of the wave. That place was Tizunahi, but then hack the country of the wave, Naruto thought. It was one of his first big missions that formed from a C rank into an A rank, due to the hidden surprises and the dangers of the mission. He remembered how he had to fight hired mercenaries, Zabuza and Haku. But they were also missing Nin, making them very dangerous. It's a shame they had to die, since they were betrayed by Gato. Well, the irony was Gato was betrayed as he died from Zabuza's kunai. Naruto couldn't help but look at the ceiling of the Hokage's office as he drifted off into his thoughts. Boy, Gaki, are you still paying attention? Or is there something you're not telling me? Tsunade said, snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. Well, it all began when I was going on this C-rank to A-rank mission, but before Naruto could get on with the story, a sudden knock was heard on the office door. Tsunade straightened up again to prepare herself for what was to come. Naruto, I'll hear about your little story later. I think they're here. Enter. Tsunade said to Naruto and entered the door. The door was opened by none other than Mike Guy and his team consisting of Rock Lee and Niji. But Naruto noticed that something was missing. A certain brown-haired girl that was always part of their team. He narrowed his eyes on that missing spot while focusing on Guy. Erm, where's Tenten? Naruto asked Guy. He gave a puzzling look as he put his hand on his chin and closed his eyes, deep in thought. Hi, Tenten isn't here since the springtime of youth was not on her side. It's a shame. How can the springtime of youth abandon one of my teammates? Like always, Naruto had no idea what he was saying. But Lee decided to join in the confusion as well. Lee looked at Guy and gave him a thumbs up and that cheesy smile of his. Do not worry Guy sensei. Tenten's springtime of youth will flicker once more. Her flame will rise up from the heavens and cure her of anything. Youth doesn't give up. Lee shouted in his overconfident tone. Unfortunately, Guy did the same. You are right, my student. Come. Let us run towards the sunset and convince our springtime of youth to cure our unfortunate comrade. Hi Guy sensei. 
Lee, and Guy, as they say, go ahead and run towards the sunset. Unfortunately the sunset was right behind the window where Tsunade is. Guy and Lee start running off towards the window, and, boy. Don't run towards them Tsunade tried to say, but was cut off by the shatter of glass. Guy and Lee ran towards the window and started heading towards the sun. Naruto, Niji, and Tsunade stood there dumbfounded at their behavior. Tsunade just sat down and sighed and pinched the base point of her nose. Arg those two and their antics are going to be the death of me Tsunade said. While those two are a few sunsets short from reality Naruto said, making a bad joke. Niji just grumbled as he facepimmed his forehead. Those idiots Naruto walked up to Niji. Niji, why isn't Tenten here? Naruto asked, a little worried about the hair bun weapon mistress. She's sick with a cold. She doesn't want to hinder our progress with the group, so she sat this one out. Okay so I did fuzzy brows and Niji just grumbled again, not wanting to explain their foolish antics. Never mind, you two, front and center. Tsunade yelled at Niji and Naruto. Niji and Naruto walked up in front of the Hokage desk as Tsunade sat down again. Anyway you two, I'll go ahead and brief you up since those two won't be coming back for now. Naruto and Niji perked their ears up for the information that was about to be given to them. Tsunade took out a scroll from her desk and laid it out for all to see. It was showing some mission statistics and reports. Tsunade points at some information within the scroll. The village of Nanaza has been suffering from a few attacks from a few bandits. Currently, they have only resulted in pillaging the village and only threatening a few villagers. But if this keeps up, the village will end up very poor and suffer. And if the village has nothing to offer the bandits, the bandits may destroy the village, and this is something that we cannot allow. Tsunade stood up and pointed at Naruto. Naruto, I assigned you to Team Guy because I am aware of Tenten's condition. Plus, this is considered a B-rank mission, which means I don't want to take any risks. You will assist Team Guy and liberate the village from these bandit attacks. The village rests on the edge of the country of the wave. I suggest you all move out tomorrow. Naruto and Niji nodded. Hi, Hokage-sama. I will notify Guy-sensei and Leon Niji then leaned on the ground, holding his head. Naruto and Tsunade became wide-eyed. Naruto supported Niji. Niji, what's wrong? Niji held his hand up to show that he does not need assistance. Niji stood up and got his bearing straight. Niji looked at Naruto. It's nothing. Just a slight headache. Too much has been happening to me, as of late TCH, damn Lee, and Sensei Niji walked out of the Hokage office, holding his head. Naruto started to go after him, but, no Naruto. If he says he's fine, he's fine. I suggest you just go home and prepare for the trip tomorrow. But Tsunade Ba Naruto was cut off by Tsunade. I can understand you're worried about him, but don't let it get to you. Niji's a strong shinobi. And even he won't let anything get in his way. Tsunade said. Naruto looked at the door. But he shook it off. She was right, Niji was strong, he wouldn't let this get a hold of him that easily. Naruto nodded and bowed, leaving the Hokage office. The next day, Naruto headed off towards the main gate with his backpack and everything. He saw Niji, Mike Guy, and Rock Lee ready to go. Naruto, Niji, Lee. My students. Are you ready to run to wave? We're not running, Niji said as he sighed. Guy looked at Naruto. I have a hip condition. Naruto said, pointing at his leg. Guy looked at Lee. Hi Guy Sensei. For the springtime of youth. Let us run to wave. Lee said enthusiastically. That's the spirit, my student. Onward. We shall run to wave. Guy shouted. Guy and Lee started to race each other and ran at such an unparalleled speed. Niji and Naruto just stood there and just looked at them run off. They both sighed at the same time as they walked through the forest. As Guy and Lee went speeding off towards Wave, Naruto and Niji decided to just screw it and run after them. They didn't want to be separated from the group if any enemies appeared. It wouldn't be a good position. As they sped off to Wave, they noticed that they were noticing more water in the area. To put it simply, they were seeing rivers, mini waterfalls, and even puddles from here and there. It would seem they were getting closer to the country of Wave. Guy and the rest of the group stopped abruptly. Guy turned to his team. Alright my students. Mine and Lee's springtime of youth is growing tired. We must rest to recuperate our energy. So we sat. Guy and Lee sit on the ground as Guy ordered. Niji and Naruto looked at each other and sighed. They sat on the ground as well, resting their legs. Naruto took off his backpack while grabbing out what seemed to be a copy of Icha Icha Paradise, the second volume. Naruto began to read it but shocked the hell out of Guy, Lee and Niji. Naruto. What are you doing with such an youthful book? Guy said, shocked. Naruto looked at him as he skimmed a few pages. Iro Senen wants me to read this book. He said that I don't read enough good literature these days. But you know what? Naruto tossed the book into a nearby river. 
It made a tiny splash, as the book sunk into the bottom. It's too damn boring. Why can't he just give me a booker hand signs? I'm a ninja for crying out loud. Naruto pounded on the ground in frustration and scratched his head furiously. Why doesn't that stupid perverted sage teach me anything good? At least give me a kate in jutsu or something. Or a suit in jutsu. Those would give me an advantage in battle. Unknown to Naruto, his wish was about to come true. As Naruto kept scratching his head in frustration, he heard something. Suiten. Mizutanga no a geyser of water suddenly shot out of the nearby river they were sitting against, and the geyser was aimed towards Naruto. Naruto noticed it before it hit him and dodged out of the way. Same goes for the rest of the group. They got up from the ground and prepared their battle positions. Gai Sensei, Lee, and Niji got into their tojutsu stances. The one who fired and Naruto started to show from an orb of water that suddenly rose from the river. The water from the outside of the orb seemed to be sliding off it, as if the orb was giving a type of waterfall. As the water ball evaporated, it slowly resembled a person. This certain person then fully appeared and was standing on the ground near the river. This wasn't any particular person, but it was a ninja. She wore a headband with an unknown symbol, but it was slashed off, indicating she was a missing nin. She wore a type of blue kimono with blue frills and waves on them, covering her entire body. She also wore two earrings that were in the shape of orbs. Her hair was tied into a ponytail, and her hair color was a bright green. She smiled as he saw her victims. Well well, there was a 75% probability that you would be hit by that attack, but it would seem my miscalculations were wrong. How boring. She smiled. She pointed at the blonde shinobi. And you brat. Trying to beg for something you can't even learn to begin with. How obviously pathetic. Everything is about calculating of what you are capable of, and yet you force your way to such lengths. Shut your trap lady. You're not my grandmother. Naruto shouted. How dare you. I'm not that old you brat. I'm 29, and I calculate I have 60 more years before I die. Yeah well, your maths is starting to annoy the hell out of me lady. Boy the girl was getting agitated at Naruto's badgering. Guy thought this was the perfect time to strike. Lee. Niji. It is time to give her the springtime of youth Guy said to the group. Hi, Sensei. Niji and Lee shouted. However something grabbed them from behind and pinned them to the ground. Naruto, Niji, Lee and Guy looked behind them to see the same girl, pinning them to the ground. The same with the others, they were pinned by the same woman. The main green-haired girl giggled as she walked up to them. Team Guy looked up at her and growled. Did I also mention there was a 95% probability that you would fall for my trap as well. When you all dodged my suetin, I took the obvious procedure to pin you all with my water clones. All of you failed to notice the water all around you, including the puddles of water. The green-haired girl said. They all understood it now. And this is where your death begins, my darling little ninja. She then took out several kunai from under her kimono sleeves and pointed them to the pin shinobi. She then shouted out, I am Naomi, an ex-ninja from the land of sea. Naomi threw her at the group. And there's a 100% probability that you will die from this attack. As she shouted out a percentage and success of her attack, each of her pierced their designated target's head. Upon contact, each one made an instantaneous death as their heads dropped to the ground. Naomi stood there in disbelief, but victory. Their dead Naomi stood there, puzzled. HMPH, I can't believe such weak ninjas were sent here. It would seem I found an unknown percentage to my confidence. As she looked at her water clones to give them the okay that they're dead, they released the corpses. Ah well, better rally up the bandits. Might as well scavenge whatever these ninja have. There's a good chance I can find something rare on these weaklings Naomi said, feeling good about herself. She wondered what kind of item she would find on them, whether it be money or even different types of weapons. She started to approach the bodies. Naruto, it was a good idea to release cage bunshins onto her. It would seem she has fallen into our trap. Niji said. Naruto stopped the rest of the group earlier halfway to the country of waves. He wanted to make sure that team guy didn't fall into a trap, so he made cage bunshins of the entire team go ahead of them. It was a tactic he learned previously when he was younger, and it seems that this repeat has worked. Right now, the rest of the team are hiding in some nearby trees, looking at Naomi as she starts talking to herself. I sensei, it would seem she is the bandit leader. We must release our youth upon her. Lee said, feeling confident in his abilities. No, my student. We must not rush in so recklessly. Guy said, telling Lee to calm down. Niji and Naruto nodded. We have seen what she is capable of. A ninja of water jutsu and a vast array of intelligence as well. We need a strategy. But what? Niji said, thinking. But Naruto only giggled as he saw the scene where Naomi was about to search the ninja's belongings. Naruto went through a couple of hand seals and the rest of the group wondered what Naruto was doing. Naruto what are you doing? Niji asked. Naruto only grinned. Watch. 
Naruto finished the final hand seal and pointed at the cage bunchens. Now let's see what these hm. Naomi got closer to the bodies, but they started to glow. Naomi wondered what was going on with them. She sent her water clones to check out the bodies. The water clones got closer to the bodies, and then there was a sudden shout. Hamakaze no jutsu. Naruto shouted. The bodies exploded with a loud bang. A fiery explosion engulfed the water clones Naomi had created, and a huge puff of smoke engulfed the battlefield, concealing the real Naomi. As the smoke covered the battlefield, the group couldn't see where anything was. They hopped out of the trees they were in, and got closer to the puff of smoke. As the smoke disappeared, there was nothing to be found. Naomi had disappeared. The group looked frantically to where she might have disappeared to. Niji knew what to do. He formed a hand sign and said, Ayakugan. Veins showed on his face, indicating his all-seeing Byakugan had been activated. As his vision turned into a weird view, he looked around at his surroundings. He looked into the nearby trees and further up ahead in the area. But so far, he could see nothing that could be a womanly figure. Niji turned off his Byakugan. I don't see her. She just disappeared. It would seem she has escaped from our grasp. Niji said, thinking calmly. The rest of the group relaxed for a little bit. But obviously, Guy and Lee wouldn't relax. Very well then. In the name of spring, we shall search this battlefield for any spoils that our enemy has left behind. Guy gave a thumbs up with his bright smile. Lee immediately followed up. Hi, Guy Sensei. We shall look for clues to find our enemy's next location. Lee said, giving the same smile and thumbs up. Niji and Naruto just had a sweat drop behind their heads, seeing them as ridiculous. But their idea wasn't bad. Guy turned to Naruto. And also, Naruto. An excellent youthful idea and turning your cage bunchens into an explosion. Where did you learn such a thing? Guy asked. Naruto just gave his usual foxy grin. Well, I attached each of my cage bunchens with an explosive tag. I figured that if the enemy got close enough, they would explode. I call it my kamikaze no. Impressive, Naruto. Niji complimented Naruto. This was rare for Naruto. It was very rare for Niji to compliment Naruto on his techniques. Naruto just scratched his head in bashfulness. Niji returned to looking around while going near the river to see if their enemy had hidden under the rampaging river. However, Naruto regained his focus as he saw something coming at Niji. From within a puddle, Naruto could see that the girl, Naomi, was rising from the puddle. She took out what looked like a blue kunai, attached what seemed to be a blue orb accessory. Naomi threw the kunai at Niji, aiming right towards his unexpected head. Naruto didn't have time to shout at Niji or the rest of the group. Without thinking, Naruto ran towards Niji. Niji immediately sensed Naruto's presence, but it was too late. Naruto tackled Niji to dodge the flying kunai that was aimed for Niji's head. The kunai hit a nearby tree and literally turned into a giant icicle. If Niji had been hit by that kunai, he would have been frozen to death. However, they went from one dangerous situation into another. When Naruto tackled Niji to avoid the flying kunai, Naruto didn't notice the rampaging river right in front of him. With a loud splash, they both land head first into the river. They immediately started swimming up to the surface, only to see that they wouldn't stop moving. I and Lee immediately noticed this and started to rush off after them. Lee. We must save them. Hi, Guy Sensei. As they rushed towards Niji and Naruto, they were abruptly stopped by Naomi. She rises up from under the rampaging river, unfazed at the river's current. She threw a couple of kunai at Guy and Lee to stop their movement. Naomi only smiled as she looked back at Naruto and Niji as they were swept up by the river's current. Naomi turned back to Lee and Guy and pointed at them with a similar blue kunai. Did you really think I would really run away from all of that? I calculated an 80% chance of hiding from you guys while nearby, waiting for a perfect chance to strike until it hit 90%. And apparently, I have succeeded even if it is partial. She threw the same at Guy and Lee. They abruptly dodged and saw that anything it hits is frozen in an icicle. Naomi kept talking. It's a shame that wide-eyed boy wasn't frozen in place. However Guy and Lee immediately charged at her with some tojutsu, but she immediately dived into a nearby puddle, avoiding their combined punches completely. She appeared in another puddle right behind them. Where they're heading is their burial and their deaths. This time, Guy and Lee were unaware of Naomi's position. She went through a few hand signs and shouted, No, she unleashed two geysers of water from a couple of puddles on the ground. Guy and Lee turned around at the sudden sounds of water, but it was too late. They were engulfed by two geysers of water. A veil of water surrounded them as they tried to fight out of the surrounding water. She finished off her by throwing two of her ice kunis and joy your icy grave. They were thrown and made contact with the geysers of water, freezing both Guy and Lee into a glacier. 
The geysers were used as mediums to amplify the water, and the ice kunais were used to ensure that they would turn into glaciers without fail, plus they made them a bigger target. Naomi smiled as she walked up to Lee and Guy in their icy prisons. She touched the glacier. My statistics do not lie although there was a miscalculation with that other boy's Naomi blinked but gave a seductive smile. But nonetheless, all these ninjas have been taken care of. And no one will ever know of my miscalculation. The chances of anyone finding out is 0%. Fufufu Naomi, feeling satisfied, left the two in their icy prison and turning her back at the victims of the river. Meanwhile, ah! Get me out of this river. Naruto and Niji were still struggling with the river's current. It was so strong they couldn't get a grip on things. Naruto then sparked an idea that could get him out of this river, he focused his chakra into his feet and his hands and tried to stand up on the river. But the current was too strong. He couldn't get a grip on the river, let alone stand on it. Niji was having the same problem, and it seemed things were hopeless. As they traversed through the river's current, they started to hear the current get louder than ever before. They looked ahead while still having their sights in front of them. They could see that the river was ending. But that wasn't the fear they had hoped. Byakugan. Niji hastily turned on his Byakugan to look further ahead. What he saw was his fear a waterfall. It had to be at least 200 feet in height. It would surely kill them. Naruto. There's a waterfall ahead. We need to get out of this Uniji was then dunked under the river due to the current. He immediately swam back to the surface to maintain his swimming posture. Naruto was thinking quickly and immediately had an idea. Cage Bunshin no, but his idea was also a failure. Naruto summoned four Cage Bunshins to see if they would get a grip on the situation. But all they did was splash into the river and met the same fate as Naruto. Naruto was getting worried. There was a waterfall ahead of them and they couldn't get out of the situation. Naruto swam near Niji and held onto him. As they drew closer to the waterfall, they slowly started to lose hope until the moment of fate came. With a deathly agonizing scream from Naruto and Niji, Naruto yelled. Whoa. Niji yelled. They fell 200 feet from the waterfall. They hit the water hard and disappeared within the foam of the bursting waterfall, never to be seen again. Two hours later, Naruto could see himself within a type of sower. He looked at his surroundings and saw a cage in front of him. Apparently, he is in his subconsciousness, home of the Kaiubi. He looked at the cage that was in front of him. And appeared a face that seemed like the devil himself, but it was actually, the Kaiubi no Kitsune. The monster grinned at Naruto, as he started to speak. Hello Kit. I see a painful agonizing full of doom from a waterfall managed to bring you here again. How unfortunate Kaiubi said, evilly. Naruto just pointed at the Kitsune and started rambling his mouth off. Oh yeah. And whose fault is that? That's stupid Naomi's fault, that's who. If she hadn't attacked Niji, I wouldn't be in this situation. Kaiubi just growled at Naruto's answer. Correction, Kit. You tackled your friend and ended up in the river. If you had just stood there and let your friend die, you wouldn't have fallen into that river. Kaiubi made an evil laugh. Naruto couldn't think up a good retaliation against that. He just looked down at the dark floor. He looked back up at Kaiubi, who was waiting for an answer. Am I dead, Kaiubi? No, you are merely unconscious, Kit. You should wake up in a couple of minutes. That splash in the water has not harmed you, but it only knocked you out temporarily. Same with the wide-eyed kid, I presume. Kaiubi said. Now get out of here kid. I don't want to talk to you at the moment. You have wasted enough of my time. With a flicker of the demon's chakra, it surrounded Naruto. On the edge of a calm and very peaceful lake, Naruto floated on the top of the lake, motionless. His back was floating on the surface of the lake as his unconscious face looked at the sunshine. Within a few minutes, Naruto immediately started coughing up water and started to regain consciousness. As he regained it, he immediately noticed his situation and started to keep himself afloat. Seeing how he was awake and that the water was very calm, he focused his chakra into his feet so he could water walk. As he stood on the surface of the lake, he was curious about where he was. He looked behind him and saw a huge waterfall, which seemed to be around 200 feet big. But that reminded him of a memory he should be using right now. Niji. Naruto looked around frantically for the wide-eyed Byakugan user. He looked high and low, but he could not see Niji on the floating lake or anywhere near the waterfall. Naruto was about to give up until he saw a peculiar human being. The human being looked to be on a stretch of land, but on the shore of that land. Naruto suspected it was Niji and immediately rushed over to him. He got a closer look at the corpse near the shore. He turned it around and saw Niji's face. Naruto's first instinct was to try and wake up Niji. He dragged Niji onto the grassy area of the land and not the muddy shore. Naruto looked at Niji's pale face, showing that he was showing no sign of breathing. This worried Naruto. He immediately started to place his hands on Niji's chest and started pushing it, performing the basic procedure of CPR. But Naruto felt something weird. 
he felt a lump on Niji's chest. But before Naruto could identify it, Niji began to show motion. He immediately started to cough up water. It was a miracle. Naruto and Niji had survived the waterfall, they were just temporarily unconscious. As Niji coughed up more water, he immediately sat up, punching his chest lightly to calm his chest down. He weakly looked at Naruto and weakly looked at his surroundings. Where are we Niji said, confused. On a strip of land. We fell 200 feet from that waterfall. It's a miracle we're even alive. Naruto said. Naruto told Niji to stay put as he got a few twigs here and there and gathered them within one place. Niji looked at the wood and saw what Naruto was trying to do. But there was a problem. Naruto, we can't make a campfire without any fire and judging by all these twigs on the ground, they're way too wet to start anything. Niji said. But Naruto only chuckled. Niji was confused at Naruto's sudden chuckle. I failed to find this situation humorous in Naruto. Oh don't worry. I wanna show you another technique I've learned the past few weeks. Niji became curious about what Naruto was talking about. Naruto stood in front of the pile of twigs and did a few hand signs. He then took a deep breath. Hayton. Fai no Naruto then released fire from his mouth and aimed it at the twigs. The twigs immediately caught on to Naruto's flames and immediately stopped him. To say Niji was surprised is an understatement. He was dumbfounded. Never would he have thought that he learned such a thing. Niji had so many questions it was breathtaking. Naruto, how when did Wa Niji was confused. But Naruto had the answer to all of his questions. Training, Niji. I saw this in a scroll I found on another rogue ninja in one of my missions. If Hiro Senen can't teach me anything, I'll just scavenge any I can find Naruto gave a V for victory sign, showing he was victorious. But he didn't let that take advantage of him, as he started to take off his ninja jacket, his pants, and his shirt. Of course, he left on his boxers. Niji immediately blushed at what Naruto was doing. What are you doing Naruto? Niji immediately turned around, not looking at the blonde. The blonde was confused at Niji's sudden embarrassment. What? I'm putting my clothes near the fire to dry up. I don't want to catch a cold. Naruto immediately sat down near the fire. As he sat near the fire, he started to look back on what happened a few hours earlier. Naruto wondered how Guy and Lee were faring with Naomi and to see if they defeated her or not. They were morons, Naruto knew that for sure. But they were very strong and wouldn't lose that easily. Naruto asked for Niji's opinion. Hey, Niji, do you think Guy and him? He saw Niji near the shore of the lake, nowhere near the fire. Naruto got up from the campfire and immediately went behind Niji. He wondered what he was looking at. But Naruto had to speak up to Niji. Boy, Niji. You're going to catch a cold if you keep wearing those clothes. Niji didn't move a muscle from Naruto's response. I am fine Naruto. I would like to be left alone. Niji said coldly. But Niji, you can't possibly be comfortable in those clothes, especially the gear you have on. Just take off your shirt or something. I said no Naruto. Why not? It's not like you're hiding anything. Niji flinched at Naruto's answer. Naruto looked at Niji's back, confused. But Naruto was starting to get fed up with Niji's ignorance. But then Naruto suddenly came up with an idea. Hi Niji. Catching a cold for all I care, Naruto walked away as he heard Niji sighed with relief. Now he knew something was wrong. As he walked further away from Niji, Naruto made a familiar hand sign and whispered Cage Bunshin no. He summoned two Cage Bunshins behind Niji. Oh Cage Bunshins. Pin Niji's arms down. Niji was wide-eyed and turned around. But it was too late. The two Cage Bunshins pinned Niji by surprise and had his back faced against the ground. Naruto stood in front of him. I don't know what's gotten into you. But I think the waterfall bumped your head somehow. You need to get dry, Niji. Assist Naruto. You don't understand. Naruto didn't listen, he immediately started to button off Niji's shirt. Once it was unbuttoned, he started to notice that it was really tight to his body, like the water was absorbed within his shirt. Naruto shrugged it off and immediately took off the rest of his shirt as it flew into the rising sky. When the shirt landed near the campfire, like the rest of Naruto's clothes, Naruto noticed something very different. A sight of Niji that he did not know. Niji gasped, blushing furiously. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes, what he saw in his eyes were. Naruto's words could become vocal, he was stumbling over them. Naruto was very close to saying the word that would express his shock. Or actually, being shocked was an understatement. It was worse than shock. Meanwhile in the trees of a nearby forest two bluebirds were discussing their lives. Tweet tweet. Lovely day, isn't it, nerdy? Tweet. Indeed. Tweet 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 tweet. I can't wait to see my old grandma bird. It's been a while since I've seen her. Tweet, indeed. While the two birds were talking, they started to feel a rumbling noise around the forest. It seemed to be a shockwave. The birds immediately flew away from the area that was being hit from the shockwave. 
However, the birds were too late, as they were blown away from the shockwave. They didn't know what kind of shockwave was, but they heard one word that would be glued into their minds forever. Nandato The words of Uzumaki Naruto become shocked to find that Niji Uga, the man he has known for years is a woman. A few hours later, Naruto found himself following Niji, as they were walking in the woods, trying to find a way back to Gai and Rock Lee. Naruto had to distance himself from Niji, since the Byakugan user did not want to be near him, as of right now. Naruto couldn't blame him, the blonde found out his secret after all. Naruto looked up at the cloudy sky, trying to think things over of what in the world just happened. I just can't believe that Niji is a girl, and I kinda mistook his, her, her chest for something else Naruto thought, trying to get his thoughts straight. A day earlier, in Naruto's flashback, don't be ridiculous. I'm a girl you idiotic imbecile. What do you Niji immediately shut her mouth. He let the word girl slip from his lips. Niji is so flustered with the situation she was not thinking straight and gave Naruto an even more surprised face than his previous surprised face. But how, but you who how in the hell? Naruto yelled, still not understanding the situation. Niji may have given the slip of the tongue, but she wanted to get out of the situation. Naruto, I am going to ask you this once. Turn around. Now. But, I have questions. Now. Okay Naruto was still confused about the situation, but he knew that this was a very delicate matter. So he turned around. Niji put her hands under her shirt so she could tighten up the sarashi around her chest. As she tightened the sarashi, she began thinking. Damn it, how could I let this happen to me? As Niji tightened up her sarashi, she lowered her shirt. Niji signaled Naruto to turn around and what he saw was unbelievable. The lumps on Niji's chest were gone and she looked like the Niji he knew. However, Naruto knew her secret now. But I still haven't figured out why Niji is a girl. Niji how come you hid your Naruto was interrupted by Niji's cold voice. Shut up, now. Niji said, coldly. He didn't want to talk about his secret at all. But Niji this is too much of a surprise to ignore why are you a woman? Why are you not a man? And why do you still have your manly voice and not a woman's voice? This is too confusing. Naruto shouted, scratching his head in frustration. Niji just stood there emotionless. He turned his back on Naruto and started heading towards the forest that was laid in front of him. Then Niji Naruto started to get close to Niji until Niji threw a punch at Naruto. Naruto saw it coming and dodged it by backstepping five feet. Niji stared at him with emotionless eyes. Don't get near me. I want to be alone. And with that, Niji started heading down the forest path, with Naruto following her from far away, still dazed with confusion. Then flashback, Naruto and Niji haven't spoken a word in hours. Niji had her hands in her pants pockets, while Naruto just followed her from far away. Naruto still couldn't understand everything that has happened to them. First they both fall from that waterfall, he rescues Niji, then takes off Niji's shirt due to her incompetence of getting dry, and then suddenly finds out that she's a woman. Naruto scratched his head as he got to thinking. Why would Niji hide her identity like that? I mean, all this time I figured Niji to be a guy, and this happens Naruto thought. The uncomfortable silence between Naruto and Niji was unbearable as they walked in silence. Naruto needed to say something legitimate so Niji wouldn't get offended. As they walked through the forest, he noticed that the whole forest was wet, covered in puddles, and even the trees were drenched in water. Looks like it rained recently here. This brought Naruto to reality. He then realized the battle he and Niji went through before getting into the rampaging river. He now had a good question to ask Niji. Naruto caught up to Niji, where he walked with her side by side. Niji just looked at him and growled. Did I not just tell you to leave me alone? Niji said, staring coldly at Naruto. Naruto shook his head and spoke. I just remembered something. What do you think that girl Naomi did to fuzzy brows and big fuzzy brows? Niji just stopped and looked back at the direction of the opposite path. I've completely forgotten. Meanwhile, Naomi had left an hour ago, leaving the two frozen green beasts alone in their icy prison. They were all alone to stay in eternity in their icy grave. However, the two were still alive. Frozen, but alive. Guy and Rock Lee knew that this icy prison was a strong one, but it did not contain them by much. Guy's icy prison began to shake and tremble, and a couple of cracks appeared outside the frozen glacier. With a few more shakes and several more cracks within a few seconds, the icy prison shattered, along with Guy's battle cry. He cried as his fists were spreaded in the air in opposite directions. The icy prison he broke left several pieces of shattered ice. They spread it all around and hit the ground, giving it a sparkly form and look. Guy relaxed his stance and took a deep breath. Then he hugged himself over his shivering body. It's called. Guy yelled. He immediately started to rub his hands over his body to warm himself up and to take a few breaths into his hands. But, as he looked at his current frozen student, he immediately stopped. He ran towards Lee's icy prison and clenched up his fist. 
He focused energy into it and immediately slammed his fist into the ice, causing it to shatter into several pieces. Lee immediately collapsed to the ground but regained his stance in a kneel position. But like Guy, he shivered and rubbed his hands over his body, trying to get warm. Although things get unnecessary. Lee, my student. Come embrace me so we may both be warm. Guy opened up his arms wide, indicating he wanted a hug. Lee had no trouble agreeing. I sensei. Lee rushed right into Guy's open arms, hugging each other tightly. Their hug only lasted for a short minute as they started to get the bearings of their situation. They then remembered the event of where Naruto and Niji dived into the river by accident. Lee looked at the river with a concerned look. But Guy was not worried and put a hand on Lee's shoulder. Do not worry, my student. I am sure those two are fine. Not even a mighty current can damage their youth, nothing can. Guy gave him a smile and a thumbs up. Lee cheered up a bit. I sensei, what should we do for the time being? Lee said, for once, snapping back to reality. Guy crossed his arms and put himself into his thoughts. Well, it's no use just standing about here. We should go ahead and move on with the mission so we can find the bandit camp. We might even get revenge on that woman that us into that giant popsicle. But Guy sensei something has been bothering me, what is it Lee? What were those strange things she was throwing at us? Guy recalled the battle that he had with a woman and the tag attached blue they kept getting hit with. If I had to take a guess, those had a special tag on them similar to explosive tags that would freeze upon impact. Brilliant guy sensei. Your eyes do not fail you. Let us go now Lee. We should go find them. Guy noticed a rustle in the bushes and immediately pounced right into it. As he was fighting with a bush, Lee started to cheer him on. Oh guy sensei. Show that that bush cannot defeat the spring huh? When Guy Sensei finished tackling the bush, he took out a single man with shredded clothing. It appeared to be a thief. Have mercy. The thief cried. Meanwhile, well, whatever those two are doing, I'm sure they're fine, Niji said. Naruto and Niji were still walking on the forest path, trying to find their way out of the forest and back to their team. You sure? I mean, that woman seemed to be pretty strong and sneaky, too. Naruto said, having a worried look on his face. Even if those two are muscle-bound nimrods, they're fast and strong. I doubt that woman would stand a chance. Well if you say so. They stopped talking and only started to walk in silence again. It would seem Niji wasn't uncomfortable anymore since they were talking about their enemies. However, Naruto still hasn't forgotten about the wide-eyed girl situation. The blonde was afraid she would reject him if he brought up the subject again. He decided to leave it alone for now since there was no point in pushing it any further. Is it that much of a surprise to know that I'm a girl ironically, Niji brings it up. Naruto just looked at her, wide-eyed. Well yeah, it is. I've known you for three to four years and all this time I thought you were guy. Everyone did. At least I think everyone did Naruto started to think and then he realized it. He put his fist into his other hand, coming to a conclusion. I get it now. Everyone knows you're a girl and I'm the only one that thought you were guy. Naruto then started to pout. Why didn't my friends tell me anything? No, no one knew. Niji immediately disagreed with Naruto's understanding. Eh? No one knows of my true identity. None at all. Really? Naruto said, curious now of the conversation he was starting to ignore. I've been trying to keep this identity of mine hidden for so long I hate being a female. Hate being female Naruto asked. Niji nodded while looking down. This body it's nothing but a burden towards me, it's not how I wanted to be born, it's not, but before Niji could finish her sentence, her feet suddenly became immobile as she stepped into a small puddle. Niji widened her eyes in shock as the puddle suddenly became frozen and froze in Niji's feet. Naruto immediately reacted to the situation and tried to pry Niji's feet out of the now-revealed frozen puddle. But Naruto immediately stepped back as he was about to be hit by a few kunai. What Naruto saw in the trees he couldn't believe. And there was a 76.73% chance of hitting you too. A familiar voice rang Niji's and Naruto's ears. They couldn't believe it. The girl, Naomi, the ex-ninja of the Land of Sea, had found them. Naomi hopped down from the tree and stood between Niji and Naruto, who were each three feet apart. Naomi gave a mean look. You know, I really didn't expect you guys to survive that waterfall. She then brought out her mini abacus from her pocket and started toying with it. Normally, a normal person would have a 0.000001% chance of surviving it. And I can see that you two are not before she finished her sentence, Niji threw a kunai at her abacus, looking at it shatter in front of her in shock. She then turned around and got angry. Hey. That abacus cost me quite a bit of yen, you stupid girl. Naomi yelled. Niji couldn't believe her ears when she heard Naomi say that. What how Niji said, in shock. Again, meanwhile, well now, that bandit sure started talking his mouth off when we caught him. Yes, Guy-sensei. Thanks to his help, we know where the bandit camp is. 
especially their ringleader. I can't believe that girl Naomi is behind it all. We should have been more careful. Thanks to their sudden findings of a hidden bandit, they were off towards the bandit camp, where they were hoping to liberate, so one of the nearby villages would be at peace again. But, as they walked through the clear open field, they noticed a certain view in the distance. Thinking it was the bandit camp, Lee and Guy ran straight towards it. As the scene got bigger and bigger, they noticed it to be a small bandit camp. And by small, it's a few tents and huts here and there, which is pretty low down. When Guy and Lee stepped towards it, they noticed they got several icy glares at some of the men who were outside their tents. The bandits immediately recognized them as intruders. Then, a guy with an evil grin and a red skullcap stepped up. Well well boys. Looks like we have a couple of green morons who stumbled upon the wrong path, eh? The skullcap guy looked back towards his men, taunting Lee and Guy. Sure is, lieutenant. You think we should have some fun with them? Another bandit spoke up. Heh, what else did you have in mind? The guy in the red skull cap just laughed. But then he gave a more serious face and pointed towards Lee and Guy. Attack. Don't let them escape. A few bandits charged through to attack Lee and Guy. They immediately got into their attack positions. Are you ready for this my student? Yes, Guy sensei. Then let the springtime of youth punish our foes. Who? Guy let out a battle cry as he threw himself into the bandits, unleashing his tojutsu on his foes. Left hook there, right hook, a kick in the face there. Every enemy was a pushover and got knocked out within one attack. Lee was doing the same as he was clearing out each bandit with no trouble at all. However, the red skullcap guy just stood there, avoiding the battles. Once all of the enemies were cleared up, Guy and Lee looked at the red skullcap guy. He laughed mockingly. Well now, I didn't expect you to wipe out every single person of my men. The skullcap guy brought out a couple of gloves from his pockets and put them on his hands. They seem to have a couple of metal knuckle points on the gloves, indicating that a punch from them can hurt. But you are not the only ones that know Tojutsu. Let us see if you can handle the metal brawler. The red skullcap guy rushed towards Niji and Guy as they prepared themselves for the attack, a situation that was dire. Niji's feet were frozen to the ground and Naruto just stood there, analyzing the situation. The fact that paralyzed both of them is that Naomi saw Niji as a girl. Naruto and Niji couldn't figure out how she figured it out, but were willing to wonder why. How do you know? Naruto blurted out. Naomi turned around to face Naruto. She gave a pleasing smile that was enough to make it creepy. Foolish boy, Naomi, then turned around to Niji. And a foolish little girl. I have been spying on you two ever since you started walking down this road. And I found the conversation between you two quite pleasing and surprising. She walked up to Niji and cut Niji's chin with her hand. But my my I didn't think such a man would be a girl instead Naomi examined Niji's face while Naruto's face grew with anger. Naruto was about to charge at her until Niji made an action. Niji pushed Naomi's hands away, or at least, she tried. Naomi's remaining hand quickly grabbed both of Niji's hands together and placed a blue tag on them. After tapping the tag two times with Naomi's fingers, there was a tiny flash. When the flash cleared within a second, Niji's hands were frozen from the wrists, similar to handcuffs. Naomi waved her finger with a ah, ah, ah not so fast kind of motion. I wouldn't want such an interesting girl causing any violence towards me. You're just too cute to be angry. Naomi said in a seductive voice. Naruto had enough of this, he immediately rushed in until Naomi brought a kunai to Niji's neck. Naruto immediately halted his charge, looking at her with anger and nervousness. Naomi smiled. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Unless you want to risk a 100% chance of this girl's head being sliced off, hmm? Now Naomi turned to Niji. It makes me wonder how such a girl like you can hide your own assets. Naomi immediately unbuttoned Niji's robe, just to reveal the sarashi on Niji's vest. Niji started to fidget to get out of the icy prison she was in, but she couldn't budge. Naomi looked at Niji's chest in curiosity. The sarashi of course, a typical bandage to decrease a woman's upai size, I wonder what kind of size you have, stop, I said stop. Don't even dare to ah uh, Niji's last word sounded very unlike her, as a girlish gasp came out of Niji's lips. Naomi had grabbed one of Niji's assets and started to rub it around. Not so manly anymore, are you? That was the cutest yelp I ever heard hee hee. Naruto just stood there, watching his teammate get toyed with like a dress up doll. This is getting out of hand, I have to rescue Niji somehow, but how am I going to do that? I could use a cage bunshin, but there's no place where I could launch a sneak attack. Naruto was a sitting duck. Niji said in a cold voice. Hmm? Is there something you would like to say, little girl? I can imagine that there's a percentage of, don't you ever call me a girl. Niji immediately launched two of his palms towards Naomi, creating a type of air blast to push Naomi away. Naomi took it by surprise and started to fly towards Naruto. 
Naruto, taking this as an opportunity, immediately started using Page Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto summoned a Cage Bunshin and started to form chakra within his hand, his Bunshin started to rotate that chakra so Naruto could perform the Rasengan. Naomi saw this as she was flying towards Naruto, but it was too late. When Naruto's Rasengan was formed, he immediately rushed forward, yelled Rasengan. And smashed his Rasengan right into Naomi's head. However, it didn't push Naomi back like the Rasengan normally does. Instead, her whole body turned to liquid. As the water absorbed the Rasengan and immediately dissipated, he noticed that it was a water bunshin that took the attack as a diversion. So that means the real Naomi was hiding somewhere. But while Naomi wasn't here, Naruto seized this opportunity to go near Niji. He immediately started to form a few hand signs to prepare the fire breath jutsu. When Naruto got there, he took a deep breath and blew out his eyes, being careful not to burn Niji. The ice melted away and became weak enough for Niji to break away from. The flames also melted the handcuffs Niji's hands were sealed in and he immediately broke the grip from them as well. Niji was completely free. Niji immediately buttoned up his robe, but he didn't recover from the incident Naomi tried to pull. Niji put her hand on her chest with her face full of anger. Damn that woman trying to mock me like I'm some kind of girl to her Niji said, straightening up her robe from any other distortions. But Niji you are a girl. Naruto said, correcting Niji, but this only enraged him further. Niji put her face closer to Naruto's to give him a very angry look. Don't ever call me a girl. Why aren't you a girl to begin with? Or were you lying Niji, fed up with Naruto's curious attitude, grabbed Naruto's collar and lifted him off his feet. Naruto gave a surprised look at Niji's behavior. What the hell Niji? Naruto, if you call me a girl one more time, you'll punch him? Yes, I'll punch you. Niji immediately pushed Naruto away from herself due to the sudden voice behind her. She looked up in the nearby trees but didn't see anything. Niji performed a hand sign and yelled out by Akugan. His eyes had veins all around them and became more focused. He searched around the trees and the area around him but she didn't see anything. But what Niji failed to notice is the waterish figure slowly taking from behind him. With Niji's Byakugan activated, he saw it immediately. Niji used his Jaiken abilities to land a hit on Naomi. With punch after punch Niji tried to land, Naomi had quick reflexes and managed to dodge every Jaiken fist with no problems. Naomi only chuckled at Niji's foolish attempts. Your accuracy rate is only 14%. What's the matter? You seem to be slow, as a girl. Naomi taunted Niji. This only infuriated her further and tried to kick up her speed. But it proved to be futile. With every hit Niji tried to land, she hit nothing but air. Damn it, stand still. Or what? Your girly 10% strength will hurt me? I'm so shocked. Niji continued to let her taunts get a hold of her. And Naruto tried to step in. Page Bunshin no, but he was interrupted by Niji's voice. Naruto? Let me handle this. Niji said, still struggling and trying to hit Naomi. Forget that. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto formed six Cage Bunshins. Naruto ordered them to distract Naomi by making a frontal assault. However the Cage Bunshins failed to notice the puddles of water on the ground. When they stepped in it, the Bunshins were suddenly pulled into the puddles by a pair of hands in each puddle that each Bunshin came across. The puddle looked harmless, but, as each Bunshin was pulled down, it seemed like they were being dragged into a bottomless ocean. Almost every Bunshin was taken down until only one was left, plus the real Naruto. Naruto had no choice. He didn't know what Niji's sudden dislike is about being a girl, but it's training him in the fight. He had to finish it quickly. Naruto summoned one extra Bunshin. He put forward his palm so he could have one clone rotate the Rasengan. Naruto then ordered his other cage Bunshin to get Niji out of range. Now go. The cage Bunshin launched off to get Niji. Unfortunately, when the cage Bunshin tried to find the opportune moment to get Niji out of the way, Niji made a split-second attempt to hit Naruto's cage Bunshin. What the hell Niji? I'm trying to help here. Naruto, I said let me Niji lost focus on his battle and was immediately punched in the gut by Naomi. Niji was punched so hard she coughed up blood. However, this also got Niji flying away from Naomi. Niji regained her posture and landed on the ground safely. By the time she backed off, Naruto's Rasengan was ready as the blue sphere shined with such intensity. Naomi widened her eyes, seeing that she didn't see it coming. Naruto rushed forward to connect the Rasengan to Naomi. Rasengan. Naruto yelled as the Rasengan made contact with Naomi's stomach. Naomi went off spinning into a nearby tree as the Rasengan pierced her stomach. She crashed into the tree and the next one before that. And the impacts finally stopped at the third tree. Naomi was still conscious but gravely injured. There was a hole in her stomach. She kneeled to the ground, clutching her stomach with distorted pain. She slowly got up and balanced herself to a nearby tree. Seeing as how Naomi was immobile, Naruto approached Niji to see if she was alright. 
Niji was in pain, but she was fine. Naruto lended a hand to Niji to help her up. But then Niji just slapped Naruto's hand away and got up on her own. Niji looked at Naruto in anger. I said I had it under control of Naruto. What the hell, Niji? Why are you acting like this? Why are you not letting me help you? I said I had Naomi right where I wanted her. If I could just land a hit on her by hitting the air? I don't know what's gotten into you, but you got hurt because of her. Naruto said, pointing at the blood on Niji's face. She wiped it up with one of her hands. This is nothing. I can handle everything on my own without your help. Niji had it up to here with Naruto. She walked towards Naomi until Niji's back collar was pulled by Naruto's hand. We're not done here. Don't think I don't know. You kept giving in to the taunts that Naomi had been giving you. You fight like a girl and all the other similar lines. Is this what this is about? That you're a girl? Naruto explained, Niji turned around with a contorted look on her face. You have no idea how it's been like in my life, so what? You're still Niji and nothing's going to change that. Niji had a look of surprise on his face as he heard Naruto say that. Niji hadn't thought about that before and noticed that she had been pissed off this whole time. She had not taken notice of her actions. Naruto I. While Naruto and Niji were bickering about their problems, Naomi seized this opportunity to look for a plan of escape. She looked around her and saw a nearby puddle. She smiled with a contorted face. She weakly unleashed a few hand signs towards the puddle. And yelled. Suiten Mizu Manko no Jutsu. The puddle began to distort into a type of whirlpool. As the puddle swirled, her sudden yell alerted Naruto and Niji to Naomi. Naomi just smiled as she crawled into the puddle. I estimate a 100% chance of escaping from you too. Until then. Naomi dived into the whirlpool, thinking she had claimed victory, but she was so wrong Niji looked at Naruto. We'll settle this later. We need to get into that whirlpool, quickly. Naruto nodded at Niji's decision. While the whirlpool was still open, they rushed into it. Niji dived in first. But the whirlpool gradually became smaller. Naruto dived into it in just the nick of time. The whirlpool seized its whirling completely after Naruto's exit. Meanwhile, Head W what are you green beasts the guy with the skullcap was suffering from several injuries. His skullcap was torn a little bit, his left arm and leg was broken, and he was exhausted. The skullcap guy could keep up with Lee and Guy for a short time, but he fell short of speed and strength and only succumbed to their attacks. The skullcap guy was on his unbroken knee, kneeling. That is who we are. We are defenders of justice and the green beasts of Kanoha. My Guy and Rock Lee. Guy made a pose with a manly arm pump and a smile that shone. Rock Lee couldn't help but admire Guy for what he is. But then another sudden disturbance came about. A nearby puddle suddenly formed into a type of miniature whirlpool. It was right near the skullcap guy, too. The skullcap guy wondered what that whirlpool was. But suddenly, a young woman in a light-colored kimono came out of it. She slowly crawled out of it due to her grave injury in her stomach. She crawled completely out of the whirlpool and finally started to relax with a sigh until she suddenly saw the green beasts of Kanoha in her presence. She was shocked. No way this wasn't in my calculations Naomi blurted out. She then pounded the ground. Why am I miscalculating everything? Naomi pounded the ground repeatedly. And then suddenly, two more figures popped out of the whirlpool. A blonde and a black-haired person came out of the whirlpool as they just suddenly jumped out of it. It was Naruto and Niji and they landed right near Naomi. Not only that, but they were drenched with water. I'm soaked. Look. My hair is all drooped down. Do you have any idea how much I put into this hair to make it spiky? Naruto complained as he started to mess with his hair. Niji looked at his situation and saw the skullcap guy, Naomi, and even the green beast of Kanoha. Niji looked at Naruto. Naruto ties up that guy and Naomi with some wire. Looks like our mission is accomplished. We'll talk later, alright? Naruto nodded. And Niji looked at Mike Guy and Rock Lee. And it's good to see that you two are alright. I see you've had your hands full. Hi. But it wasn't a big deal, we were worried when you two fell into the river. But I can see you managed to make it back in one piece. As they started to talk about what happened, minus the part about Niji being a girl, they managed to turn Naomi in and the other criminal to the law enforcement of this country to let them be dealt with. With their mission accomplished, the group started to walk back to Kanoha. As they walked back to Kanoha out of Wave Country, Niji whispered something in Naruto's ear. Don't tell anyone what I am. No one knows and I intend it to be a secret. Niji whispered. But Naruto also whispered something back. Are you over it now? And are you sure no one knows? Yes. I let it get to my head, but please understand that I am not used to such a thing. I was selfish. Alright with Niji's and Naruto's agreement, they agreed to keep their discovery a secret. Soon they would reach Kanoha. Boy. Oji-san. Another bowl. Naruto yelled as he raised his empty bowl towards Tenichi. Hi hi, Naruto. Coming right up. 
Tenichi said as he grabbed the bowl from Naruto and returned back towards the stove. Ichiraku's, Naruto's favorite place to be at. It was like his own drug to forget everything around him, to enjoy himself especially that certain incident on the mission he was participating in previously. It gave him a lot to think about, which was Niji. His smile turned into a neutral facial expression, not showing happiness, but not showing sadness either. He placed an arm on the bar table as he supported his head with his hand, trying to put all the pieces together. Sure, I was crazy about it before, but I didn't get a chance to put the whole situation together the Sarashi, Niji being a woman, and not a guy I thought I was fine with it during the mission, once I got over the craziness, but he thought, as he just gave a sigh. I guess I'm not fully accepting of the whole situation. When he was reporting to Tsunade with the rest of the team, something that Tsunade mentioned during that time made him even more confused. He closed his eyes, remembering the meeting all too well. Tsunade's office, one hour ago, I, Lee, Naruto, and Niji were standing in front of Tsunade's desk as the sun set through the glass window. With the sun shining in, Tsunade, who was sitting at her desk, almost looked like nothing but a shadow in its place, almost like a silhouette. Tsunade scans the papers on her desk, looking at the results of the mission. Naruto looks at Tsunade, with his arms crossed, and a cheeky smile. So what do you think? We kicked her ass, we got rid of her gang, and we saved whatever they were bothering. He said cheekily. Tsunade then stared at Naruto, who also had a pressure point on her head, indicating she was pissed off with Naruto. But she just shook her head as she gave a sigh. She then looked at Niji briefly, who seemed to be the same as normal and the same facial expression. He then looks back at Naruto. She would just give a nod. I was hoping that waterfall would have put your head straight, Naruto. She says with a bit of agitation in her voice. She leans back in her seat. But the mission did get completed with only minor inconveniences, so I guess there's no point in sweating over it. She leans forward with her hands on her desk as she twiddles her thumbs. You'll get your pay tomorrow, since I'm a bit busy with other responsibilities at the moment. Dismissed. Niji would give a nod to her, simply walking out without another word. He would twist the knob on the door, open it, and walk out. However, Lee and Guy had a better idea. Lee. He would wrap his arm around Lee as he pointed at the sunset behind Tsunade. Do you see that? It is calling us, the sunset of youth. Lee just gave a smile as he pumped his fist in the air. The sunset of youth. We need to pursue it Guy sensei. Guy gave a smile as he gave Lee a thumbs up, indicating that he agreed with him. Agreed. He then pointed towards the sunset in a heroic stance as he shouted. Let us run towards the sunset. Running into the sunset was a good idea since it was normal for those two. However, there was a problem with their logic. Before Naruto and Tsunade could act, the window behind Tsunade shattered into a million pieces, raining down glass towards the bottom below the Hokage's office. What happened is Lee and Guy with amazing agility to add sped through the window, breaking it and charging forth towards the sunset. Tsunade immediately got up from her seat as she roared outside the window. Boy. That's coming out of your pay. Tsunade almost slammed her fist against the railing of the window. But since there would be some pieces of broken glass still attached to the window, she refrained from doing so, instead, she slammed her fist against the wall. Most of the broken glass was on the outside of her office, but that didn't mean some pieces would not be on her office floor. Naruto got a little nervous as his head let out a sweat drop. He slowly walks backwards towards the door. Right, I'll just be. Wait, Naruto. Tsunade turned around as he saw Naruto walking back towards the door. I need to talk to you for a minute. Naruto immediately stopped, slightly tilting his head at a request. What for? Naruto asked. Tsunade sat back down at her seat, leaning her elbows on her desk with her hands on both her cheeks, letting her hand support her head as she looked at him. It's about the mission you undertook. In your report, you stated that this ninja named Naomi, correct? Naruto nodded and Tsunade looked at the report again. Anyway, this woman named Naomi she not only knocked you, but knocked Niji off into a river and down a waterfall. Is this correct? Naruto nods again. Tsunade also gives Naruto a nod. I see. Naruto was a little confused on why she had to repeat in her own words what the report said. Tsunade just gives a little chuckle. Not anyone can expect to survive a waterfall. Usually they would drown because of how strong the current of a river can be when it's near a waterfall, she said. Or if that doesn't kill them, they would surely die from the fall and the sharp rocks below. It's a miracle. She said with a grin. Naruto scratched his head, although he was a little frightened at how she made it sound so evil, or something. Erm you're starting to remind me of what Anko Naruto said nervously. Tsunade couldn't help but chuckle. Oh please, if it was Anko reading this report, she would make it more frightening and overdramatic. But then Tsunade gave a more serious stare towards Naruto's face. This made Naruto step back a bit, wondering why she was staring at him. However what happened after the waterfall is what I am curious about. 
She points toward something in the report with her index finger. Naruto wasn't close enough to her desk, so he couldn't really see it. From what I know, a fall like that would have made you two very wet and rather tired, right? Naruto raised a brow. Why is she asking so many questions about the mission when it's right in the report? Something's wrong, Naruto thought. But he would only simply nod. Well, yeah when we regained consciousness, I started a fire on some dry land after finding a few branches. Then, I took off my clothes and placed them by the fire so they would dry. And Niji did the same, I presume. Naruto was about to say no, but then realized that Niji had a secret that only he himself knew. And he had to keep that secret. And if he did say no, Tsunade would start asking questions on why he didn't. So, trying to think up a lie within a few seconds, he said something as he stomped his foot on the ground. Of course he did, or else he would have gotten a cold. He said, with a satisfying look on his face. Although, the mighty Hokage didn't change her facial expression and only sighed. She looked at the report again and just shook her head. Excuse me for a minute, Naruto. Tsunade sat up from her seat and onto her feet. As she stood up, a piece of glass got trapped under the bottom of her foot. She lifted her foot so she could place it on the hardwood floor. She turned to the window and cracked her knuckles. Naruto just waited patiently but was wondering what she was doing. She put her hands together and started to form a few hand signs, indicating she was performing. Naruto leaned slightly to get a better view of what she was doing and was, again, confused. What are you? Forming the final seal, she gave out a word in a yell as she shifted her seal forward. A clear but visible aura bursts out towards the room like a shockwave. This sent Naruto towards the ground and on his rear end. As he shook his head trying to put together what happened, he looked around him and saw the entire room surrounded by a purplish aura. But that done, Tsunade walks towards Naruto and rests her arm on the side of her stomach with a smirk. You're a terrible liar Naruto. Tsunade extends a hand towards Naruto. Naruto extends his hand towards her and with an oomph, she lifts him up. But Naruto was rather stunned by what Tsunade just said. Am I a liar? Tsunade gives a nod. Why would you call me a liar? And he points towards the aura around the room. What is this purple stuff that's around us? Tsunade crosses her arms. Basically, it's a sound that proves the room. It's commonly used by diplomats and other shinobis. It is to make sure that when giving out top secret information, they are never heard. And the aura I put around is for this specific reason. Tsunade explained. Now she went back towards her desk and sat down in her comfy seat. You're part of the report conflicts with Niji's. Well you say that Niji did indeed dry his clothes along with you, Niji refused to do so because she didn't want to be revealed. Revealed. What are you ah? Naruto immediately snapped his mouth shut and went wide-eyed. When he heard the word she at the end of that sentence, he knew that his lie was detected. What the she knows that Niji isn't a guy. No no, she must be playing mind games with me, Naruto thought. Niji told me that her identity was a well-kept secret. So therefore, wouldn't it make sense that Niji's identity wouldn't be known to Bachan? His mind was going in circles, thinking of how she's just trying to toy with him. But the fact that she mentioned that Niji's report conflicted with his, he couldn't decide one or the other. Tsunade only gave a sigh. You're confused on how I know this, aren't you? She just shook her head as she looked at Naruto. I've been aware of Niji's condition ever since I became the next. Plus she pointed her index finger towards Niji's report. She made it, in fact, clearer that you saw her identity by accident. So, wait, Niji already told you her identity, and yet Naruto was even more confused as he went along. She told me that no one else knew of her secret. So Naruto was then interrupted by Tsunade as she raised a hand, signaling him to stop. Well, secrets are supposed to be something hidden, something that no one should ever know. She probably only said that so you wouldn't go running your big mouth about it. Tsunade's eyes lowered. You may think Niji is a silent badass, but even he has feelings too about certain situations. You should know that by now Naruto. Naruto would slightly nod at what she said. She has a point even I have secrets that I would rather not show to anyone he thought to himself. So what do you want me to do? I'm not telling you to do anything. I just want you to respect Niji's secret and not go babbling it to anyone. Understood. Naruto would give a nod. And Tsunade gave a small smile. Very good, now Tsunade began. She started to form some hand seals with her hands and before performing the last seal, she said. Don't make her angry, you know how women get. She smirked. Naruto would only nod at a request. As she formed the final seal, the shockwave sent the entire aura down. Present time, Naruto opened his eyes, which he had closed for around a minute. He looked around and just cursed himself. Damn, that botch and just knows everything, doesn't she he said out loud. He flinched when he said that out loud as the thought ran in his head. I'm not telling you to do anything. I just want you to respect Niji's secret and not go babbling it to anyone. Understood. 
Tsunade's words float in his head, as if warning him. Naruto only sighed, as he just waited on his ramen. My life sucks. Having finished his ramen for the day, Naruto walked away from Michiraku's after paying his bill. Or actually, he didn't have much of a bill to pay, especially since he spent most of his time eating very little and daydreaming a lot more, mostly on the events that happened today and during his previous mission. The thoughts of how the Hokage knew about Niji's true identity it still confused him, regardless that it was mentioned in Niji's mission report. That's another thing that bugged Naruto. Why would Niji mention her secret in her own mission report? Naruto kicked a stone in his path as he walked towards his house. It became nighttime when he left. He mumbled to himself. Niji must really trust Bachan to enclose that information to her, huh? As he pondered this, he passed by what looked like a tea shop. The windows were still lit up and the outside tables and chairs had a few patrons. The sign said tea stop. Naruto only gave the sign a slight chuckle as the words ran through his head with a slight smirk on his face. Tea stop why does that remind me of snail stop? He said out loud to himself. Or perhaps because it is a nice place for the elderly to enjoy, Naruto. Naruto nodded to himself. Hey yeah, it's because it's a nice place too huh? Although he didn't know why he almost repeated those words, someone already spoke them to him without knowing it. He stopped in his tracks as he turned his head to the right. He saw Niji wearing the same hakama and long skirt as always. He had his eyes closed, sipping a cup of liquid with some smoke rising from it. Naruto could only guess it was tea, especially since the little shop was called Tea Stop. Niji opened her eyes slightly to look at Naruto and only sighed. It might also be that the snail stops a lot in its tracks, for its movement is so limited and slow. Niji finished. Niji nudged his head towards the empty seat across from him, motioning Naruto to sit with him. Sit, Naruto. There's something we must discuss. With Naruto and Niji settled into their seats, Naruto decided to just order some hot tea for himself as well. It got cold during the night and since he might be sitting down for a bit, he might as well relax and warm himself up. As Naruto sipped his tea patiently, he waited for Niji to ask a question, especially since Niji had said he had something to discuss. Naruto could only guess what it could be. If he wants to discuss what I think he's going to discuss Naruto thought. He looked around. Even though there weren't many patrons, he would have to be careful about what he might say. This goes for the same about his life too. The words of what the Hokage said to him made him shiver a bit. Niji put his tea down, raising a brow at Naruto's shivering, but he kept his hands on his tea, warming his hands a bit. Hold, Naruto? Niji asked. Naruto only shook his head. Erm, no, just recalling something frightening. Naruto admitted. Niji only sighed at Naruto's words. If what you recalled is frightening, then don't think about it at all. Niji lifted his tea as he took a slight sip from his hot tea. Naruto only grumbled as he laid an arm down on the table, as if he was bored. So what's this thing we have to discuss? Naruto asked. Niji cleared his throat as he set his tea down once more, looking at Naruto with a neutral expression, neither smiling or frowning. Yes, about that Niji adjusts his eyes to look around him, seeing how many patrons were nearby. There were three, but none of them were within hearing distance. His eyes adjusted back towards Naruto. Before we talk about what we need to discuss, Niji began, we must be careful of what we say around the public. I don't want anything to be leaked, understand? Naruto gave a nod towards Niji's words. It made sense, especially since no one wanted to know Niji's secret. Niji closed his eyes and gave a deep breath before looking at Naruto once more. He crossed his hands together as his elbows laid on the table. I want to apologize about what happened the other day during our mission. Niji said. Naruto tilted his head in confusion. Erm, um, could you be more specific, Niji? Niji nodded towards Naruto's response. I'm talking about my behavior during the mission. I have acted immature towards you. He focused his eyes on Naruto's blue eyes, but also gave a frown. It has been a while since I felt so flustered, especially because of your oblivious behavior and actions. Naruto simply scratched his head as he shook his head. No, I should be saying sorry to you Niji. Naruto said. Niji raised a brow. He gave a small smile. It was my fault for not listening to you and doing err, well, pulling and tugging is how to say it, I think. Niji gave a small nod, letting Naruto continue on. But you know it's a real shocker you know. A guy isn't prepared for something as big as that. This is when Naruto put his two index fingers together, playing with them as some beads of sweat ran down his face. I mean, you know how it is. A guy and another guy becoming so flustered at what to see, right? Mm, I will admit, you surprised me Naruto. I believe we are both at fault with our actions. All of a sudden, Niji lightly slammed the table with his fist, making the cups of tea jiggle, but not tip over. That Naomi girl also surprised me when she overheard our previous conversation. 
I shouldn't have let my emotions get a hold of me like that, but happens, happens Niji. She's been taken care of, the mission was completed, end of story, it's time to move on right? Naruto said. Niji gave a slight nod towards his words. Yes, you are right him. Before Niji could say anything else, he could feel a few stares on himself. He adjusted his eyes to see a few patrons looking at him. But it wasn't just him. Some of the passers-by were also looking at Naruto. They both raised their brows as they were confused, mostly at why they were staring at them. They could hear slight mumblings between one another. Man, how can a manly couple speak like that in public? It's disgusting. Mommy? Is that man in love with that man? Hado? Don't speak like that. The mumblings only got louder, and Naruto only got wide-eyed, while Niji started to sweat with embarrassment. Niji immediately took out a few yen bills as he placed them on the table. He stood up as he looked at Naruto. We've given people the wrong idea, let's get out of here Naruto. As Naruto and Niji wandered off into a nearby alley, or actually, running into a nearby alley to get away from the crowd, Naruto just pressed his back up against a nearby wall. Jeez. Talk about a misunderstanding even though we were being secretive, people gave us funny looks to begin with. Naruto shouted for no apparent reason. Niji pressed her fingers to the base of her nose at Naruto's words. The way we said everything must have implied homosexuality to everyone around us. I did not expect it to be that difficult to not raise any attention. Niji also pressed his back up against a nearby wall, next to Naruto. He only sighed as he looked at Naruto. It is of no importance. We're alone now, but let's keep our voices down. Niji said. Naruto gave a nod. Although, while they were alone, there was always one thing that bothered him. When Niji's secret was overheard by Naomi, Naruto couldn't help but remember that yelp Niji gave when she was being tortured by Naomi. Niji's voice turned from male to female. But he didn't know how her voice switched to that. It was a better time than any to ask her the details. He looked at Niji with a questioning look. By the way, how did you get your voice to sound so manly? Niji raised a brow at Naruto's question. What do you mean? I mean, if you're really that, shouldn't your voice be a little lighter and less manly? It took Niji a moment to figure out what Naruto was implying. It hit him after a few seconds of thinking about it and only sighed. I can alter my voice with my own chakra. It's an ability I learned when I was younger. Though is all Naruto could say. But that was another thing that bothered him. How did you learn it? Experience and training. What Niji said was still vague. Naruto said his previous words again as he just sighed. You don't want to talk about it? No. That was all Niji said. Naruto just crossed his arms, wondering what else to ask. Well, what I'm surprised about is how you've kept your arm, how do you say it body and shape all these years? Niji just kept silent while giving Naruto a glare, as if to tell him to stop asking about her assets and actual appearance. Naruto just stopped looking as he said never mind some other time then Naruto looked up towards the sky, seeing a full moon tonight. He gave a small smile, enjoying the pretty sight of the full moon. Full moon tonight Naruto said, attempting small talk. Niji only gave a nod in response to Naruto's comment. Naruto wasn't getting anywhere with this. Perhaps Niji has discussed enough and is just tired from all the talking, especially since that crowd earlier mistook them both as a gay couple. Niji stood up from the wall he was leaning his back on and started to walk out of the alley. Naruto only turned his head towards Niji as he stopped at the entrance with his head turned towards Naruto. Perhaps someday I'll tell you everything, but not now. Alright, Naruto. I'm just tired from today's events. Naruto gave Niji a nod. He didn't want to push her buttons after all. After that, Niji walked out of the alley, completely out of Naruto's view. He leaned his head back, thinking he should head home as well. It was getting late after all. Might as well go home and get some sleep. They looked at each other with dreamy eyes but tired expressions. The woman smiled as she said the words, I love you, Naruto-kun. The blonde couldn't help but smile back as he gave her a slight kiss, giving those same words to her as well. I love you too, Niji-chan. All of a sudden, everything went black as the blonde surroundings swirled out of control, as if a huge black hole was sucking everything away. The woman disappeared and only the blonde remained, only to be slowly disappearing himself. Naruto immediately wakes up from his bed, wondering what the hell just happened. He finds himself in his bed and in his own room. He swiftly looks around and while still being sleepy, he almost smacks himself in the head while trying to gain control of his own body functions. He tries to calm down by taking a deep breath. He places his hand over his face, wiping the beads of sweat from his face. Were you realizing what had happened, he just sighed. It was just a nightmare a fucking weird one at that, although such thoughts made him even more puzzled. He just had a horny dream with Niji in it. Such a dream about it was beyond words and he couldn't decide if he should be disgusted or mentally insane. As he got out of his bed, he could feel something wet, as if there was something slimy. 
he looked at his boxer shorts he slept in, only to notice a stain. This drove Naruto to scream out in insanity, letting the whole village know that Naruto experienced something he shouldn't have and has the stains to prove it. When you get up in the morning, what does a person normally say? No, they wouldn't sit up from their bed and shout out immediately to the heavens. But in Niji's case, that would be the first time she had done so. Niji woke up in a cold sweat as she sat up in her futon, fully alert and scared to death. She held his forehead with her right index finger, wondering what had just transpired as she slept. From what she could recall, she could imagine a long flower field full of flowers, everything was beautiful, until she woke up screaming when she had hot boy on girl sex within a terrible nightmare. Her eyes widened as she recalled such a nightmare and immediately shook her head to snap out of it, focusing her thoughts. Even in my nightmares I am tormented. But why such a nightmare? She pondered. This wasn't the first time Niji had such disturbing thoughts. Even during the time when she had Naruto sit down for tea, she couldn't help but think about him, his blonde hair, his good looks, even his personality. Niji puts out a good front externally, but internally, she was at conflicting thoughts. And now with a nightmare apparent in her mind, it only made her thoughts even worse. She groaned as she shook her head once more and slapped her cheeks lightly. No, I must remain focused. It was only a nightmare. Nightmares are not real, she thought to herself. Getting up from her futon, Niji managed to get dressed in her usual attire while making sure the bandages around her chest were wrapped tight. She didn't want any accidents, nor did she want her identity revealed. She growled as she tightened the bandages. Why was I born with such a body? She said to herself. Meanwhile, Naruto sat on the rooftop of his apartment, staring out at the morning sun. He was still half asleep and he thought sitting out on the rooftop to see the sun rise would do him some good except for one problem. Naruto rubbed his eyes and, as soon as he blinked, there appeared to be two ninja in front of him. He flinched as he was taken aback from the sudden appearance. They appeared to be wearing animal masks and the two had katanas on their backs. In other words, they were Anbu ninja. Naruto sat himself up straight as he looked at them. Can I help you too? Naruto asked. The Anbu nodded. Naruto, Tsunade Sama request your presence. Please head to the Hokage Tower as soon as possible. The Anbu on the left said. Naruto cocked his head, confused. Why? We do not know, but it is urgent, so please. Naruto nodded at his request. And the Anbu nodded in return. One of the Anbu disappeared in a matter of milliseconds. However, one of them stayed behind. He turned his back as he said, be sure to dress up accordingly, Tsunade Sama would find it severely inappropriate if you went in your undergarments. With a sigh, he disappeared in thin air. Naruto sat up in a panic. He looked down at his attire, and indeed, the Anbu was right. He had no shirt on, no shoes, nothing at all, except for his boxers. He slapped his hand in front of his face, wondering why he even bothered getting up this morning. But Naruto fully dressed, he heads toward the Hokage Tower. As he entered it, he immediately rushed to Tsunade's office. As he stood in front of the double doors, he knocked on them hard. He immediately heard a shout from them. Enter. Naruto opened the double doors, only to find Tsunade behind her desk, sorting out paperwork. However looking around the room, he could see that several papers and documents were torn up, chewed on, stomped on, or were burning in a little corner. Naruto sweat dropped at the mess this room was in, and Tsunade leaned her elbows on the desk while covering her face. She was obviously not in a good mood, and Naruto cautiously stepped forward towards her. You called for me, Tsunade Bachin. Tsunade's head immediately shot up and marched right toward Naruto and held him by the collar. He looked right in his eyes as she yelled. What the hell does it look like, brat? Naruto tensed up. What the hell did he do to get her furious with him? He didn't know. All he knew is he tried to get out of Tsunade's grip as he wiggled, trying to get free. Hey. Put me down. Tsunade growled as she gritted her teeth. But after a few seconds, she relaxed her posture and her face eased up. She only sighed as she released her grip from Naruto. He landed flat on his butt as he straightened out his collar. He immediately sat up and got irritated. What the hell was that for? Naruto asked in irritation. Tsunade only shook her head as she went to sit back down at her desk. I'm sorry Naruto. This workload is just driving me insane and what you just said to me was sort of a trigger. She said in frustration, massaging the base of her nose. You may not understand it now, but once you're Hokage, you'll know what I mean. Naruto only shrugged. Indeed, he would understand why once he was ready to be Hokage, but that was years from now. Naruto merely crossed his arms. He was about to say something, but then he realized the small fire in the corner started to get bigger. Naruto reacted accordingly as he rushed off towards the corner, stomping his foot on the small flame, extinguishing it. Tsunade just slumped her shoulders even further as she laid back in her seat. After that was done, Naruto looked back at her. 
So what did you want to see me for, besides me extinguishing a flame? Naruto asked. Tsunade sat forward and looked at him with a grin. There's a carnival currently being set up for tonight. And by my personal request, too. She began. Her hands were together as her fingers intertwined. Kanoha hasn't had any fun as of late, so I thought it would be fitting for everyone to relax and have fun while the festivities were in the area. A little bit of R&R &R for everyone, to put it simply. Naruto cocked his head in a confused manner. So why are you telling me this? Swan smiled at his question. Along with Niji, I want you to be peacekeepers inside the carnival area, making sure no fights break out, no one stealing anything making sure no trouble is caused. It will be considered a C-rank mission. You will be allowed to partake in any of the festivities if there is no trouble brewing around you. Do you accept it? She said. First off, Naruto didn't know what to think from such a mission given to him. The fact that he was on a peacekeeping mission inside the carnival, or if it involved working with Niji. He was unsure on how to take this. He looked up at Tsunade. Why me and Niji? He asked. Tsunade stared at him for a moment before answering him with a sigh. Well, I was going to assign this to Kakashi, but I couldn't find that lazy bum anywhere. She said, as she leaned her head on one arm. So it was rather last minute, and only you and Niji are available for any missions at the moment. Besides she gave a small smirk. You'll get to have some fun while working, right? Especially with Niji. Naruto felt himself fall to the floor as he heard those last words. He immediately got up and yelled at her with a slight blush on his face. What's that supposed to mean? But Tsune just waved it off. Oh nothing nothing at all, but it is the truth, Kakashi's nowhere to be found, and I don't have much of a choice. She looks at him with a serious glare. Are you going to let the carnival go, unguarded? Naruto just shook his head, and Tsunade smiled in glee. She reached into her desk drawer and took out a mission scroll. After grabbing it, he threw it at Naruto. He caught it with just one hand as he took a small glimpse at the scroll in his hand and then back at her. Remember, 7 p.m. sharp, the manager will be expecting you at the front entrance. What about Niji? Niji will meet you at the entrance of the carnival. Niji's already aware of all the details, so you should meet there when the time arises. Are we clear? Naruto nodded, and then she pointed towards the door. Good, now get out. I've got paperwork to do. Meanwhile, at 6.55 pm, as the moon started to rise from the horizon and the sun went down, Naruto waited patiently at the gate with the two tickets in his hand. He had already met the manager beforehand to be further briefed on his mission. The guy was an upbeat old guy with a mustache, and, as long as Naruto and Niji kept the peace around the carnival, they were allowed to get in free. So it was a nice benefit that came along with the mission. As Naruto waited patiently at the gate, he looked up into the sky, diving into his own personal thoughts. Something didn't feel right with the way Tsunade gave him the mission just like that, especially when he was paired up with Niji. But then again, it could be him thinking too much. As long as he treated this like any other mission, everything should be fine, he thought. Naruto shook his head. No, I should take this as an opportunity. Now that he thought about it, to him, Niji always seemed unhappy most of the time, he never really saw her smile all that much, nor had he seen her laugh not even once. So while he was here with Niji, he might have had some fun with her. Maybe get to know her more and her true self. He wasn't the only one thinking on these lines of thoughts, however, Niji, who happened to be a few minutes away from the carnival, started to think similar thoughts about Naruto. She didn't know why she accepted this mission to begin with, but one peculiar thought sprung into her head. Perhaps if I just get this mission over and done with, I can put these thoughts and feelings of mine aside. When you have an urge, you need to release it somehow, perhaps. With these kinds of thoughts ready in her mind, he prepared for what would await her. As she got closer towards the carnival in the distance, she spotted Naruto next to the gate, looking up into the sky. Niji raised a brow at this as he looked up into the sky. A beautiful full moon. He looked back towards Naruto and shrugged. Now wasn't the time to be moon starring, he had a mission to do, consequences or not. As he walked up to Naruto, Naruto stopped looking into the sky and saw Niji. He smiled and waved for him. Boy. Niji. Naruto shouted. Niji only sighed as she heard her name in such a cheerful way, from Naruto of all people. This was going to be tough for her. She only nodded in Naruto's response. Have you been waiting long, Naruto? Naruto only shook his head at his response. Nope, I got here early, so I was just waiting and admiring the moon. It's really big, isn't it? Niji looked at the moon once more. It was indeed big, she thought. But she thinks that staring at the moon was enough. He looked back at Naruto. Indeed, but let us be off on our mission, Naruto. We have a mission, as peacekeepers, correct? Niji said as he started to walk through the gates, leaving Naruto behind. Oi. Wait for me Niji. Naruto shouted as he tried to catch up. The carnival was in full boom. 
Lights were all around, concession stands, game stands, and even several small mini restaurants filled the area. The crowd was bustling, and all sorts of people were around, businessmen, ninja, civilians, women in their kimonos, travelers, hell, even cats, and dogs littered the street, trying to find scraps of food that anyone had littered. Was it mentioned there's kimono women too? Overall, the carnival was crowded. Niji and Naruto looked around the festivities in the area, wondering around if any lawbreakers were loose, or if anything seemed amiss. As they did, they made sure to look at the festivities, as well. As Naruto walked on, he saw a little mini-game being played in one of the stands. Niji just walked on though. Naruto grabbed the hem of her sleeve to stop her to get her attention. What the mini-game was, is catching fish with a thin paper net. The rules were simple, you use a thin paper net to scoop the fish up. And if you can catch the fish without the net breaking, you get a free fish, is how the game plays. Naruto pointed at it. Hey Niji. Wanna give it a try? Naruto asked happily. But Niji stared at him like Naruto forgot his duties. Naruto, did you forget that we are on a mission? Naruto tilted his head in confusion. Did you forget that we're allowed to participate in the festivities? I was never told such a thing. She said bluntly. A question mark popped over Naruto's head. But he just patted Niji on the back. It doesn't matter, you probably weren't listening to everything Tsunade Bachin said. He said with a smile. With a little shove, Niji was pushed from behind slightly from Naruto. He glared at him, but soon rested his expression and gave a sigh. If it's just one game, then fine. She stepped up to the game stand, looking at the thin papernets. He picked one up and looked at it. He looked at the man behind the game stand and gave him the necessary Ryo to try. Niji was given three tries to try to catch a fish. With the papernet in his hand, he squinted at the fish that were in the small tub. Focusing on one of the particular fish, he dipped his papernet in, waiting for one of them to flop onto it. As one did, he immediately brought it up. But being too fast has its consequences. The bottom of the paper broke as the fish went back into its watery home. Niji closed his eyes and sighed. I'm done with this. Niji tried to walk away, but his sleeve was once more grabbed by Naruto. He gave a smile to him. Akma Niji, the first try is always going to be unlucky. Give it another try. But Naruto encouraging him to go on, he sighed even more as he went back towards the game stand. He takes the papernet in his hand and uses the same method as before. This time, making sure he wasn't as quick on the catch. As a fish flopped up onto his net, he slowly but carefully lifted it up. But the same result happened. But the rip, the fish escapes through the bottom of the net and is happy in its own sea of safety once more. Niji gritted his teeth as he slammed the table with his fist. This made Naruto flinch slightly, especially the guy behind the counter. Naruto grabbed one of the papernets and gave him a worried smile. Hey now, it's just a game called Niji here, let me show you how it's done. Naruto took Niji's last turn and placed the papernet into the tank, waiting for one of the fishies to come. As one did, he lifted the net delicately, but was quick about it too. However, rip, the net, yet again, gave way and out with the fishy. Naruto just stood there with a dumb smile on his face, not knowing how to react to this. To how much he boasted that he could catch a fish, it only backfired on him. Naruto then slammed his fist on the table in anger. What kind of cheap game is this? Are these nets made out of air or something? they're too damn delicate. As Naruto raged at how cheap the game was, Niji dragged Naruto away from the stand, keeping him out of any further trouble. As she dragged him far away from the stand, Naruto got out of her grip and only stomped his foot in frustration. Damn it I know that guy was cheap, I know it. He ruined my chance to show off. But Niji only smirked at Naruto's attitude. Did you not say to yourself that it was just a game? She chuckled. Naruto turned around and pointed at her with an angry face. That's not the point. It's about pride damn it. Huh. He relaxed his expression as he saw Niji start to chuckle more and more from his reactions. Naruto simply scratched his head from his sudden change in attitude. Well you're pretty cherry. Niji quickly realized this, but it was too late. He stopped chuckling and drifted his eyes away from Naruto with a small blush on her face. It was actually kind of cute. Why did I just laugh at that just now? She thought. No I mustn't think about it, I have to keep these thoughts in the back of my mind. Niji shook her head, trying to rid herself of such thoughts. She goes back to her usual neutral expression as she walks off. Anyway, we must continue our patrol. Come Naruto. Naruto just stood there, not knowing what to make of what just happened as Niji walked off. Naruto soon followed after. They continued their patrol around the carnival. There were a couple of times where they had to break up a fight or to tell some drunken idiot to leave a concession stand when they were getting too flirty with the women, but nonetheless, they were having a bit of fun as they went along. However, Niji started to grow a bit restless as the patrol went on. 
Their thoughts started to become more apparent every time they stopped at a concession or game stand. There would be times where Naruto would drag her to one of them, try to win a prize, but don't. She didn't know why he was doing this, or why he should. Wasn't this just a mission, or something a little more clever? Several scenarios ran in her mind, but she couldn't choose any of them that could be the logical reason. Finally, there was another stand that Naruto dragged her off to. A game stand that involved ten stacked bottles on a table, and three balls on the stand's table. Niji was beginning to grow weary from all of these little games Naruto drags her off to. Moon Niji. I wanna see if there's any wild strength in those arms. Naruto, I do not really see the point in this. Oh come on now Niji see for yourself. Naruto pointed towards the back of the stand. Little fluffy creatures hung in the back, and quite a variety teddy bears, bunny rabbits, foxes any child or girl, would squeal at such cute things like this. If you can knock down those bottles, you can get a giant teddy bear, or any of those other fluffy toys. Niji only sighed at Naruto's begging. She pushed a few hairs from her face so she could get a good look at the bottles. It only seemed to be a mere ten bottles to knock down. With a carefully aimed hit, she could knock them all down. She is a ninja after all. She nodded. Ein, but this is the last game. And after that, we're sticking to the patrol, understand. Naruto was a bit saddened by her response, he was expecting her to have a bit of fun at the carnival, but it seems that was too much to help for. Naruto nodded. Okay, Niji Naruto said sadly. After Niji reached into her pocket for the necessary Ryo to play the game, the guy behind the game stand handed her three hard-looking balls. Niji grabbed one. They felt as hard as a rock as she gripped it. With Niji focusing on her target, she mustered all her strength into her arm and threw it at the bottles. The bowl was flying with tons of strength backed by it and was aimed for the middle of the pyramid of bottles. Niji had done it, she aimed it perfectly. However, a small thud could be heard as the ball bounced off the bottles. The bottles remained standing and the ball just bounced on the floor. It was like hitting a wall the bottles weren't knocked down, not by an inch. As Niji stood there dumbfounded, she wondered what could have gone wrong. Ridiculous. I hit the bottles right on the spot as she stood there, Naruto stood behind her, patting her on the back. There's a trick to these Niji bottles, they're made of a special material that makes them harder to knock down. You would need more than proper aiming to knock them down. Here, let me show you. Naruto grabbed one of her balls on the stand, gripping it tight. As he aimed towards the bottles, he threw it, and hard, as all his strength left him for that one simple throw. However, the same result occurred, as the ball just bounced off the bottles, as if it were nothing. Naruto glared at the bottles, as he was about to slam his fist into the table. However, he stopped midway, getting an idea from his brilliant but mischievous mind. He withdrew his fist as he looked at Niji. Alright this time for sure, no fooling around. He looked back at the bottles, not knowing Niji's confused reaction. He gripped the last ball on the stand. As he stared at the bottles for a good few seconds, he closed his eyes briefly, sending a thought to his brain. Hey, Kaiubi, I hope you can hear me, because I need all the power I can get with this next row. He thought to himself. Opening his eyes, a tinge of red covered his eyes for a brief moment. Feeling his throwing arm pumped up for action, Naruto roared as he made like a pitcher and threw the fucking ball as hard as he could. The speed and power of the ball was of immense proportions as it immediately made contact with the bottles. And instead of history repeating itself playing, the bottles were knocked down. Or more in his case shattered. Glass sprawled around in separate directions, but within a very low radius around the table the bottles were one sitting on. With all the bottles gone, the game stand bender was shocked to see one of his stack of bottles to be destroyed. He grabbed a handbell and rang it over his stand, shouting how he has a winner. Naruto found it hard to believe that he managed to knock down the bottles, and he had the Kaiubi to thank for that. Niji was stunned. As the vendor behind the game stand grabbed a giant plushie of Naruto's choice, he chose a big teddy bear. As the gigantic plushie was in Naruto's arms, he showed it to Niji. Told you I could do it. You surprised me Naruto, your strength has grown, has it not? You could say that, heh. Yeah. As Naruto boasted about how he had a giant teddy bear in his hands, he felt that he didn't really need it. Mainly because there wouldn't be enough room for his apartment to fit it anywhere, plus it would just collect dust. That's when he had an idea. He looked at Niji for a moment with a small blush on his face and shoved the bear towards Niji. Niji couldn't help but put her hands on it out of reaction, not wanting to be crushed by the large thing. Here Niji, why don't you have it? Niji just stood there, confused. But shook his head slightly as she pushed it back towards Naruto. No, it's yours, I don't want it. Huh? Don't be silly, Niji. I used up your turns with the balls, it's only fair I give you the prize, as Naruto and Niji bickered on who would have the plushie, Niji's thoughts were starting to manifest itself once more. The things Naruto had done for her and how he went out of his way to get Niji involved with all the festivities. 
Between her thoughts and the bear being shoved into her face, Niji was starting to conflict with herself on how to take these actions and with her thoughts slowly starting to boggle her mind. For in her mind, in terms of Naruto, he was, Damn it Niji, I really don't see how carrying a big fur ball is going to complicate anything. An annoying brat. Niji stopped playing war with the bear and instead, he decided to accept it. Naruto only sighed in relief as she finally accepted the bear. However, rip, Naruto went wide-eyed as he witnessed something he never thought Niji would do. She grabbed the bear's head and twisted it clean off. Amounts of cotton and pieces of fur flew everywhere as the crowd around them stopped moving and stared at the horrific sight of the stuffed animal. Niji dropped the bear's head and body and dangerously glared at Naruto. He gritted his teeth as he saw the crowd that gathered. Niji? Naruto couldn't move, he couldn't believe what she did. Tearing off a stuffed animal's head was like tearing someone's generosity at the same time. With Niji not wanting to partake with the crowd and Naruto's reaction, she immediately jumped into the air like a ninja would, hopped on several of the rooftop's concession game stands and went off into the night. Naruto still stood there, wondering what the hell had just happened. And to add insult to injury, he felt a couple of drops of water from above. Naruto looked up with a blank look and saw that storm clouds were taking place above him and the carnival. It was going to be a wet night, a very wet night. Naruto didn't even cover himself from the rain, he was still lost in his thoughts on why Niji did such a thing to the poor teddy bear. He wanted to know why. He really did. Thunder could be heard as the crowd dispersed and seeked refuge from the rain. But no, Naruto still stood there even with all the thunder. Out of pure impulse alone, Naruto gritted his teeth and immediately took off into the night to go look for Niji, for not only an explanation, but to also know why she would behead Naruto's gift. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.